Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT official guide 2024. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when you're working with me. Today is our day number 14 and today we are on page number 87. Let's begin, shall we? The very first problem that you see on page number 87 is number 83. As you can see the problem is already on the blackboard. But before I start with the problem, before I completely forget, yesterday during the course of the lecture, I used this word NUB, N-U-B, NUB. And I gave you the definition. But if you want to learn this word properly, the proper definition of the word, and it does not hurt to improve your vocabulary. And even though you are here for GMAT and not GRE, if you're interested in expanding your vocabulary, search for this, just type in GRE vocabulary words, day number 11. That's what you want to type in, GRE vocabulary words, day 11. Or if you like, you can even put my name next to it. And you will pop up, you will see a video, a video will pop up, number 11, vocabulary. Watch that video and learn the word properly. Let's begin, shall we? Here's the problem. It says, in problem number 83 says that a firm had 15% more employees in December than it did in January. We are further told that in December, the number of employees that the farm had was 460. The question is, how many did they have in January? Pause the video and do it yourself. Let's set it up. Let's set it up. We need the room. So we are dealing with two periods, January and December. January and December and we are told that the firm had 15% more employees in December than they did in January so make up a number for January I'm gonna make up 100 we're just gonna make up a number for January why 100 because it's easier to figure out the 15% so in December they must have had 115 but we as we both know that is not the case that is not the reality the reality is that in December they had 460 so we have to figure out what goes up there that will satisfy this thing. If we solve this equation, we can figure out a value that will maintain this ratio. That's one way of doing this thing. We cross multiply solve for x. We'll do that in a second. Another way you could do that if you are able to see that. If you are able to see immediately, if you are able to see immediately that 460 that we have here, four times. 4 times 100 is 400 and 4 times 15 is 60. This quantity is exactly 4 times, this quantity is exactly 4 times, 4 times this quantity. This quantity, 460 is exactly 4 times this quantity. There you go. Which means we must have had 400. It works out. But if you are unable to see that, if you did not see that, if you are unable to see that, then we have no choice but to set it up as a ratio, or to be more precise, to set it up as a proportion, and solve for it. Let's do this, shall we? So x is going to equal x is going to equal 100 times 460. 100 times 460. I'm going to write that as because I want to keep my stuff small as possible. And this goes at the bottom. There we go. I think that's correct. Let's begin, shall we? We're going to divide top and bottom by 5. 11 is made up of 2 5. 2 5 is a 10. After we take away 10 from the 11, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes and use the 5 becomes 15, and 15 is made up of 3 5s. Voila. Now you can see why I broke this up. Since we divided the top bottom by 5, we have to divide the top by 5, and that's quite straightforward, it's just 20. And now we can see the 23, 46 is made up of two 20s. Well, 46 is made up of two 23s. 23 times 2 is 46. There you go. 20 times 2 is 40, 40 times 10 is 100, which is exactly what we have found before. 40 times 2 is 40, 40 times 10 is 10, uh, 40 times 10 is 400. So that's another way of doing it. Next one. In 84, we are told we are told that we are going to tape some television programs on our VHS, VCR, whatever you call it, 
uh, and uh, I know it's a very old technology but that's all I can think of. We're going to tape, tape some television programs and then later on we're going to watch them obviously. So here's the, here's the time recorded and here's the hours that we watched. And here's the deal, four days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Four zeros, two zero, four zero, two zero. Zero, one to two, zero, and two to three. This is a lot of writing here, and what they and they're calling H. They're calling H as the hours recorded, but not washed not not viewed and they're looking for the range I, I already ran, ran out of room so we have to do it on the top and what we're looking for is the range for this value H that's all do it yourself it's a very straightforward simple problem do it yourself I'll give you a second to, for you to be able to pause and then pause the video Let's do it together, shall we? Let's first figure out how many hours were recorded. That's straightforward. We recorded nothing on Wednesday and we recorded nothing on Friday. We recorded two hours on Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So that's six hours. Let's do it on the bottom here. So we're looking for the range for H and that's six hours were were recorded and how many were viewed, how many hours did we watch between 1 to 2 hours, between 2 to 3 hours, so if you add up this one this is 1 plus 2 is 3 and this is 5, that's all it is so in other words, in other words we either watch 5 hours which is going to give us the lowest value of H or we recorded 6 hours and we watched only 3, that's the range because we watch between three to five hours. We watch between three to five hours and therefore we must have watched the range for H is one, one to three. The question was how many hours that are left that we taped but have not viewed? The answer is between one to three hours. That's all. And in the answer choices you will see the answers written out like this. That's all. Number 85. In number 85 we are told that we are dealing with dance company which has 50 dancers in it dance company consists of 50 dancers and they are split into two groups A and B we are told that the costume worn by group A cost eighty dollars. We are further told that the costume worn by group B cost ninety dollars. And we are told that the total cost total cost of costume of all of the fifty dancers was four thousand two hundred and seventy. question was how much money was spent for the costumes of the members in group B. I'll get out of the frame now, pause the video, do it yourself and then we'll do it together.
Let's begin, shall we? Let's begin. So the first equation is very straightforward. We have 50 people. So A represents the number of people in group A and B represents the group of people, uh, number of dance, dancers in group B. And that's 50. We also know that the costumes, if, we are, if there are A people in group A, and then each person's dress is going to cost us $80. So 80 times A represents the amount of money that we spend on the costumes for people in group A. Similarly, 90 times B represents 4,270. 90 times B represents the amount of money that we have to spend on the costumes for people in group B. That's all. We have two equations, two unknowns. It's a quite straightforward deal. Let's begin, shall we? The very first thing I want to do is let's, let's divide this equation by 10 so we don't have to deal with huge numbers. Get rid of the zeros. So that's done. Now we see 8a and here we see a. a. Why don't we take this equation and multiply it by 8. Multiply it by 8. 50 times 8 is going to be 400. Now we got 8 times a. 8 times a plus 8 times b has to equal 400. Remember now, this is only 427 because we knocked out the zeros. Divide, uh, subtract the second equation from the first. Obviously, that was the whole point. 8a is going to drop out. 9a minus 8a is, or 9, 9b minus 8b is b, and that gives us $27. That gives us $27. Now the question was, how much money did we spend on the costume of people in Group B? Well, $27. Or rather, not $27, this does not represent the dollar. This represents the number of people in group B. There are 27 people in group B which is found out. And each and each each costume costs $90. So all we have to figure out is 90 times 27. 90 times 27 is what I want to figure out. But because I'm lazy, because we are lazy, we're not going to do 90 times 27. We know 100 times 27 is 2,700. Take the 100 times 27 and subtract 10 times 27, which is 270. So that's going to give us 30. 6 minus 2 is 4. Looks like the answer is $2,430. Number 86. Number 86 says that the prescribed, that the doctor prescribed Eighteen cubic centimeter for someone, for someone who is hundred and twenty pounds. Someone who weighs hundred and twenty pounds. The question, the question goes on to tell us that the doctor has made a mistake. It was a wrong, wrong prescription, and our job is to figure out how big was the boo boo. Do you understand? It was supposed to be, was supposed to be two cubic centimeter for every 15 pounds of weight. Before I continue, before I continue, even I had written down here 150 by mistake, even if it were 150, even if it, it even if it were, it were, it's hypothetical, even if it were 150, the fact that we are su supposed to prescribe 2 cubic centimeters for every 15 pounds, this person, had it been 150 pounds, should have been given 20 cubic centimeters. Instead, he was given 18 cubic centimeters. He was under-prescribed, but in this case, he's over-prescribed because he does not weigh 120 pounds, he weighs only he does not weigh 150 pounds, he weighs only 120 pounds. The question is this, percentage over prescribed. What is the percentage over prescribed? That's what it is. Do it yourself, pause the video and do it yourself.
before we can figure out what was the percentage that was he was over prescribed, we first have to figure out how much he was over prescribed. Let's do that, shall we? Let's figure out how much he was over prescribed. We can do it on the bottom if you like, and then we'll do the rest of the stuff on the top. So set it up with a proportion problem, cubic centimeter and the weight. And we know we are supposed to give two cubic centimeter for every 15 pounds of weight. And the guy weighs 120 pounds. So this is what we're looking for. Let's continue this from the top. There is no room at the bottom here. And that will tell us how much he should have been prescribed. And once we know how much he should have been prescribed, we know how much he was prescribed, we can figure out the percentage. So cross multiply 120 times 2 over 15. X equals 120 times 2 over 15. What can we do? We can divide top and bottom by 5 if you like. That is going to give us 3. 12 is made up of 2. 12 is made up of 2 5s. 2 5s are 10. After we take away 10 from the 12, we have a remainder of 2. 2 goes and joins the 0, becomes 20. 20 is made up of 4 5s. Voila. And now we can go one more round. 3 goes into 24 8 times. So 8 times 2 is 16. 16 cubic centimeter is what he should have been prescribed, but he was prescribed 18. He was over prescribed 2 centimeters, uh, two, 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 2 centimeter of the, of the medicine. Over prescribed 2 centimeters. That's how much he was over prescribed. And now the question is, and now the question is, the question that we have now drive is actually straight, very straightforward. Now the question is, 2 is what percent of 16? Because 16 is what he was prescribed. That's all it is. It's very straightforward. 2 is what percentage of 15, which is, I can write it as 2 over 16, which is same as 1 over 8. And 1 over 8, we know one quarter, we know one quarter is 25%, of course we know that. Of course we know that. If one quarter is 25%, one eighth must be 12 and a half. That's all, that's your answer. He was over, over prescribed 12 and a half percent. That was problem number 86. Let's move on to 87. we are told that f of x equals root of x minus 10. We are told that if u equals, let's line them up properly, so if u equals f of t, then what is, what is t in terms of u? Very straightforward. Very simple problem, very simple question. Do it yourself. I'll give you a second to pause and unpause the video. Well, we are told, we are told that f of x equals root of x minus 10 which implies that f of t, if we would replace the symbols, f of t must equal root of t minus 10. But we are told that that equals u. There you go, we are done. All they are asking here is, all they are asking, let's continue on the top. All they are asking here is that, for us to take this equation, root t minus 10 equals u, Take this equation and solve for t. Because that was the question. The question was, what is t in terms of u? Let's solve it. So root of t must equal u plus 10. And therefore t must equal u plus 10 whole squared. That's all. That's all there was. That was question number 87. We have reached a point... We have, reached, we have reached a juncture, a very important point, very important ju juncture in our journey. Number 87, according to, according to, the 
GMAC. And if you don't know what GMAC is, GMAC is the entity. It's the entity that gives you this exam. GMAC is Graduate Management Admission Council. Graduate Management Admission Council is the one who gives graduate management admission test. And those are the folks who give you the exam, those are the folks who publish this book. The official guide is published by GMAC. And if you have the book in front of you, for those of you who do have the book in front of you, you will see that there's a clear marking at the end of page 87. There's a clear marking at the end of, end of, end, end of problem 87 rather. At the end of problem 87 there's a clear marking that according to GMAC we have reached the end of good times. That's what they tell you. If you look, if you have the book in front of you, that's what it says at the at the end of page 80, at, at the end of uh, problem number 87. There's a marking there that tells us that that was the end of the easy questions. That was it. We'll meet again tomorrow. We'll pick up from where we left off, and now we're starting from tomorrow we are going to be in the medium territory and eventually of course we'll finish that journey and then the goal is to be able to do all the problems that appear towards the very end, one third of the exam, the hard questions. But alas, that was the end of the, as I said, the good times. I'll see you tomorrow for the bad times. Bye now.